I want to talk to you today about the real 666. That's my sermon today, my message to you, the real 666. I got your interest. So Glenn is going to stand, and uh, you don't need to stand because this is a group of, of some long scriptures, but I'm purposely doing this to you because I want you to see some things this morning. So Glenn, would you stand and read to us? Or oh, you can sit also. John, the sixth chapter. He's going to read verses 1 to 69. How many brought your Bibles today? How many got your Word of God with you? Why don't you turn to it? Glenn, whenever you want to start. John 6, verses 6. Yeah. 6 through 69. Yep. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. When a great multitude followed him, because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him. For he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in numbers 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise the fish, as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to the disciples, gather up the fragments that that remains so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered it up and filled 12 baskets with fragments of the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. Therefore when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king. He departed again to the mountain by himself alone. And when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and went over the sea towards Capernaum. And it was already dark, and Jesus had not come to them. Then the sea arose because of a great wind that was blowing. And when they had rode about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the boat, and they were afraid. And he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they willingly received him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the, was at the land where they were going. On the following day, when the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there, except the one which his disciples entered, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but his disciples had gone alone. However, the other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they had ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they got into boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Then Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? 
Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then, that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert, as it was written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said that, but I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me, all will come to me, and the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should rise it up in the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will rise him up in the last day. The Jews then complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered, These are therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will rise him up in the last day, as it is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God who has seen the Father. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread which come down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, how can, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will rise him up in the last day. For my flesh is food indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, who he who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate of, ate of the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore many of his disciples when they heard this said, this is a hard saying, who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then if if you what then if you should see the son of man ascend where he was before it is the spirit who gives life the flesh profits nothing the words that i speak to you are spirit and life and they are life but there are some of you who do not believe 
For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were or were who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, Therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted by him, by my Father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and to know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you for reading. Thank you for reading along with it. I purposely wanted us to read just about this whole chapter of John for several reasons this morning. Before I begin a discourse this morning on this message of the real 666, I just want to remind you again about tonight. What fun we have, what rejoicing we have of worshiping and giving testimonies. Come out and be with us tonight. This uh, chapter 6 is so important that you understand and read it because you need to get understanding about who Jesus is and not make the mistake that the Jews made was their refusal to see him as Lord, Savior, and King of his kingdom. This chapter is so important. Verses 1 to 14, there's a miracle. The miracle of God's provision. 5,000 men, besides wives, children, other people that were there. That Jesus, and it says there, he tested the disciples that see what they would do. And they said, Lord, 200 denarii wouldn't feed this bunch. But they said, well, all we have here is we have a little boy that has five loaves and two fish that his mother gave him for lunch. You're going to go hear about Jesus? Let me pack you lunch. But it was that little boy's generosity that fed probably close to 10,000 people. If you were to count wives, children, other people that were there. It says 5,000 men. 10,000 people. Needs were met because of the generosity of an offering of a little boy. It's a lesson to us today that God will take a little that you have, that when we give to him, he can do miracles with what we have. But we must release what's in our hands to God for the miracle to happen. We don't know that little boy's name. You'll meet him someday in heaven. Are you the kid that had the five loaves and the two fish? Yeah, I'm him. And it was so precious that Jesus said, pick up the fragments. Don't waste anything. And you know why Jesus wanted to do that? Because God wants everything that the miracle to be sustained. But also, pick it up. Because each one of those, and he did it several times, pick up disciples, the fragments, and put it in a basket. Because that's your testimony of God's miracle. Are you hearing me this morning? That's a testimony to you. How many of you have got testimony this morning of God's supernatural provision because you were willing to take and give to God what you had and God turned it around and did a miracle not just for you but others? Amen? So that was so important. Verses 16 to 21, the miracle of the fast boat. Jesus is walking on the water. It's late. Disciples are worn out. They had been rowing two or three miles. Can you imagine trying to row on a lake, Sea of Tiberias, two or three miles, and it's dark, and there's no light that you can see, and all of a sudden you see Jesus walking towards you? Would that maybe give you a little heart palpitations? And Jesus said to them first, it is I, don't be afraid. And when his presence came into the boat, it became a fast boat. 
Because if you read the scripture, it says they immediately went to shore. How fast was that boat moving? When his presence comes into your life, God speeds things up. Did you hear what I just said? When his presence comes into your life and your situation, he first says, be not afraid, it is I. God is with you through every bit of trouble. And if we'll trust him in the trouble, God will get your boat to shore from every stormy sea. I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. I love that song. It's so important that you see Jesus said, be not afraid. I'm with you in trouble and difficult situations. We need to get this this morning. Get this. Verse 22, they went looking for the bread master. This is the next day. They went looking for the bread master. Who's the bread master? Jesus. They went looking for him, and he said to them, Oh, you're here, not because of what the signs that you saw, which should have been enough for faith, but you just want some more of that heavenly bread that I made for you all. Some people will follow God just for the benefits. Are you hearing me? I'm following because of what God can do for me rather than being a disciple and having faith to believe. Are you hearing me this morning? It happens. I'll follow because what God can do for me and we've got it completely backwards. And so Jesus starts a discourse about who he is. He says to them in this thing, this food is temporary. He said, my food is everlasting life. He says, and I will give it to you because the Father's seal is upon me. Jesus said, the Father's seal is upon me. Listen, what is that seal? It's approval. It's anointing. It's Messiah. That was the seal that God put upon Jesus. And he begins this discourse to tell them who I am. I've got God's approval. I have God's anointing, and by the way, I'm the Messiah you Jews have been reading about for thousands of years. And they said, what can we do to do the works of, for God? And Jesus spoke to them about what's more important in verses 30 to 32. People were still focused on their physical needs. What can we do for God so God can do something for us? Folks, there's people, again, in the Christian world that's got it all backwards. I want to do the works of God. But what's most important to me is my heart following him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God wants us to do his works. He wants to use you to do his works. But Jesus cut right through where their heart was, and he kept on this discourse that I am the bread that comes down from heaven. It's me. It's not what God can do for you. But what will you do for God as far as seeing who Jesus is? That is the most important thing. Verses 32 to 49, Jesus declares to them, I am the bread from heaven. And they say in unbelief back to him because of familiarity. And this is the biggest danger for you who go to church every Sunday. You get so familiar with the kingdom and church, and preaching, and worship, and everything else, because this is what they said. Is this not Jesus, Joseph's son? You understand what I'm saying about being familiar with everything? That we lose our edge of believing? And they said, this guy is saying he's from the bread from heaven, and this is Joseph's son. Sarcastically. You read out any other translations, excuse me, other gospels that says, isn't his mother here and his brothers and sisters? We know this guy. I'm gonna, I tell you, the greatest danger is 
we lose our edge of believing because we come, become so familiar with things around us. Personal faith. Personal faith must be more important than general faith that, that we all are just together and we believe because we're all together. That's important. But you must develop, hear me this morning, you must develop your own personal faith. Your personal relationship. Jesus declared to them, I am the bread from life. And when they said this is just Joseph's son, there was no faith, it was human logic, and they could not receive this heavenly bread. They, he said, you will live forever if you eat this bread. And Jesus said to them, look to your fathers in the wilderness. They thought that Moses gave them the manna from heaven. But he said, it was God who gave you the manna. Listen to this. Listen to this. I gave you the manna from heaven because I was in heaven before I became into Mary's womb as an incarnation. I gave you the bread from heaven. And so if I give you Jewish people for 40 years, the manna that you lived with every day and you gathered, I'm telling you that the representation of the real manna from heaven is standing right in front of you. Hallelujah. I'm here. I gave it to you. Now look, I am, I am it. I am the fulfillment to eat of me. I am the bread that came down from heaven. Hallelujah. Did you get that? I am the manna that you ate. And you can eat this manna and you will live forever. Verse 52 to 58. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will die in your sins. This is really bringing it down to where people live and who Jesus is. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will die in your sins. And he said this. My blood is truly heavenly drink. And my body is really heavenly bread. Now folks, he's speaking to people who understood the sacrificial system of blood of goats and lambs and bulls. And he's standing up and he's saying, you have the sacrificial system to cover sin. I'm telling you, I am the fulfillment to eat my body and drink my blood. You will have no eternal life. You will have no life. That blows their mind. Because that's something that they would have to believe with with their heart, not the logic of their mind. Faith starts in the heart, not the mind. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. Revolutionary statement. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. You know what Jesus was saying? Accept me. Accept me. Believe in me. Because I want intimacy with you as a relationship. Again, I'm the guy that threw down the manna from heaven for you. Jews, and you thought it was Moses that was doing it. It's me. I'm the fulfillment of that intimacy that you can have with God, but drink my blood and eat my flesh. Now, he's not talking about literally. He's talking about faith. He's talking about believing. He's talking about, see who I am, because you can have a relationship with God through me. And people were offended. They were offended. God was saying in his mercy, I want to have a relationship with you. Church, this chapter 6 is a continuing revelation about communion today. Do you see it? Do you see communion in this chapter 6? I want relationship with you and it's not based on all your ritual rules. I am the fulfillment of the manna. I am the, imagine the statement, I am the bread from heaven. The other day, Carol sent me on a shopping thing, and I was at Costco, and there's a certain bread that we like at Costco. 
and I'm wandering up and down the aisles. There's only got one aisle for bread. I'm looking around the other aisle. I'm going around the other aisle. There's a lady there. I said, are you looking for that kind of bread? I'm looking for that kind of bread. It wasn't there. They had other kinds of bread, but we were looking for that Kirkland whole wheat bread that we like to put toast and make peanut butter, marmalade, or whatever. I, I don't want to bore you. But I was looking up and down that aisle for that bread because I was on assignment from the lady in red. Jesus was saying to them, I'm the bread. I'm the, I am the bread from heaven. My body is broken for you. My blood is real spiritual drink. Again, it's not the natural. It's accepting it by faith of who I am. Verse 56, he said, if we eat and drink in him, we will abide in him. It means we live in him. And listen to this. If we eat and drink of him, we will live, we abide in him. Listen, we accept the benefits. What he's saying is, accept the benefits of my death and my resurrection. Oh, hallelujah this morning, church. We're alive. We've got benefits today. Because of his death and resurrection, because we have received the whole package. There are people that are preaching a gospel today and that are believing a gospel that God is just there to meet your needs. And there's no discipleship and there's no following. That's a false gospel. Verse 59 to 66, and we're headed toward the close this morning. These other disciples, besides the twelve, Jesus had other disciples. But this was a separation line. I want to say this to you. God is bringing a separation in his church of those who are really going to be disciples and be the bride. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He, has, he is drawing the line about this is, what it, this is what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Going to church don't make you a Christian or having a Bible doesn't make you a believer. Verse 59 and 66 said this, the word hard saying. This was a hard saying. You know what the word hard saying basically means by the disciples? We don't accept this and we don't believe this. What you're saying about what it costs to be a disciple of Jesus. Eat my body and drink my blood intimacy accept me who i am we don't accept this and we don't believe this and jesus says in verse 61 does this offend you and the answer is yes they were offended and he says in verse 62 if this offends you what if right if this is a hard saying for you what if you would see me ascend up to heaven right now if you want a sign but you know what even if Jesus was to ascend to heaven right then where he came from, they still wouldn't believe. There are people whose hearts are so hard, no matter what God does, they won't believe it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So don't try to convince them. Jesus said this, don't cast your pearls before swine. Do not give that which is holy to dogs. There are people who are mockers and scoffers, and some of them were former Christians who now mock and scoff and Psalm 3 says that I will not sit in the seat of the scoffers. I don't give, listen, when people start mocking what I believe in, here's what I do. I just walk away. I'm not going to convince them. You're not going to convince them. But if someone's open and someone will listen, I'll share my testimony and talk about the greatness of my God. How about you? You have no obligation to share the gospel with mockers and scoffers. Well, Jesus was dealing with this kind of a person. And he said to them, 
And what he's basically saying is, man, if I was to go to heaven right now, basically what he's saying is, what unbelief. What unbelief. Because he had just done signs. Verse 63. The Holy Spirit gives you life. The Holy Spirit gives you life. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life, Jesus said. The Holy Spirit gives you life. And by accepting Jesus Christ completely on his terms, you have life. Jesus was saying this, this flesh, your flesh, profits nothing. And we could go into a whole other teaching on Romans 8 about the flesh profits nothing. But it is the spirit that gives us life. My brothers and sisters, by believing in him, we have the spirit, and the spirit is what quickens. The spirit is what brings life to us today. It's the spirit. It's the worship. It's lifting up Jesus. It's, it's the word of God, that admonition that I gave you a little while ago at the beginning of the service about if we will believe. What will God do? He said, my flesh is nothing, it is the spirit that gives life. It's the bigger picture about believing. Verse 64, we're almost finished. He confronts them in verse 64. He confronts them that you don't believe. And some of you don't believe my words. And, and some of these guys, listen, some of these ones were the ones that came back and said, crucify him, crucify him. These were the same ones who walked away, who turned her back. Verse 65, and, and forever truth, church, for you and I to believe, you can't come to God unless God chooses it. That's why people need to respond to the gospel, because the gospel is God's call. Will you come to me? If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, God is speaking to you. Will you come to Jesus today? He will give you eternal life. He will forgive you of your sins. And you will begin your life walking with God. He calls you today. He calls you. Verse 66. This is why this message is called the real 666. Many went back. Basically means they turned their back. And they walked away. Because I love many things about you Jesus I love many things about being a Christian but that stuff about it's you accepting you and eating your flesh and drinking your blood and having a personal relationship with you of who you are I'm sorry that just cost me too much I want the God that will bless me and give me benefits are you hearing what I'm saying this morning and many turned back and walked with him no more. And this is what Jesus said to his disciples. And he turned to the eleven and he said, what about you? You want to go too? And these people, they all walked away. You believe what that dude said? Yeah, I heard what he said. We're out of here, man. And Jesus said to the eleven, what about you? And Peter, I love Peter, big mouth Peter. He said, Lord, who else has the words of life? And he went on to say, and we have come to believe that you are who you say you are. You are the Son of God. You are the Son of God. Who else has the words of life? My brothers and sisters, this morning as we close, are you following Jesus just because you have a different sense of just getting blessed and the benefits or do you follow him because he's Lord and King and Savior of your life? You're his disciple. And he is calling the shots in your life. He's calling the shots. He's the Lord. I tell you, God's bringing a separation. There's much out there that is not the gospel of the kingdom. It leaves you room to do what you want to do if you don't quite like all of it. Kind of like the little joke I saw what the church they called it was called the Gospel Light Church, L I T E. We only observe seven of the Ten Commandments, your choice. 
45 minute service, 7% tithe. The light church. Don't want to offend anybody. Don't want to require anything of anybody. To come to Jesus means it's all for him. Because he gave all for us. So John 6, 6, 6. It's pretty similar to 666 in the book of Revelation. Because people chose a mark of man. Three sixes. Three sixes. Three man. Trinity of man. Because they were afraid they wouldn't eat and be able to have their financial assistance or their security. You want real security? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. That's our security today. Are you holding anything back from following him? Does he have 100% of you today? And I want to say this. Let's stand together. Jesus called people publicly. And maybe you've never heard the gospel before of Jesus Christ before today. Maybe you have. And maybe the Holy Spirit is speaking to you today that, you know what, there's a part of you you've been holding back for yourself and God's been asking you to surrender everything. If that's you today, today, I challenge you to give it all to God. Give it all to God. Maybe it's your future, your destiny, your retirement, your career. Maybe it's whatever it is. God is saying, I want it all. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God wants it all because we get all of him. If you're here today, you don't know Jesus as your Savior. Only he can forgive you of sins and only he can give you eternal life. And when you come to Christ, there's an angel in heaven, and I'll give you the chapter and verse. There's an angel in heaven that's ready to write your name in heaven's book. Is your name written in heaven's book today? If it's not, it can be. Let's bow our hearts. If you're here today and you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ and to be forgiven and receive eternal life, and, and you're, not, you're not sure, why don't you just raise your hand and wave at me because we're just going to pray. Raise your hand and wave at me. I want, I want God in my life today. I want God in my life today. Just wave your hand at me. Lord, I pray that we will take courage in this hour to put you first and not depend upon our own understanding. But we would acknowledge you in everything that we do because you call us to intimacy. You call us to follow. You call us to be your disciple. Lord, I pray that we will take courage in these days that we live. That we will be like Joshua who said, as for me and my house, we will follow the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Let your people take courage today. We are people of the word. We are people of the obedience. We're people that are being led by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Can you say amen this morning? Amen. Well, God bless you. We'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock. If you would like prayer for anything, please come up. Pastor Carol and I are here. Glenn is here. We'll be glad to pray with you. God bless you. We'll see you tonight.